So I'll say that there's three approaches to making this work. The first way is that you could do it manually, meaning that every few minutes or so, you would look at how many views the video has and then go to edit videos and then change the title of the video yourself. But programs can do this for you. The second way is to make your program act like a human. This means that we would write a program that would read the view count, then move our mouse to click edit videos, and then change the title from the web browser. And this would be some work to do, but there's tools that you can make a program to click and move a mouse, like Selenium, and this could be pretty useful, but for our purposes, this is pretty ass. A better way would be to talk to YouTube directly, and we can do this by using an API or an application programming interface. Almost all consumer applications have APIs and you can use them for a lot of things. Say you want to automate a daily Spotify playlist based on the weather. You could use the Spotify API. If you wanted to make a Tinder bot, Tinder API. Even things like booking flights on Expedia uses APIs of other airlines, I think. But pretty much all APIs do is act as the interface between you and the application. So if I want to know any information like how many views or comments a video has, I can make a request to the YouTube API and it sends me a response with that data. Pretty much I'm going to the YouTube API, which they built and asking them, can I have the number of views on this video? And if I have the right credentials, like say I'm signed in or something, then I'll get that data. But how exactly do we even ask or talk to the API? Well, with pretty much every API, there's documentation on how to use it. So if we go to their documentation, we can find out how to get started. And honestly, we just have to get authenticated. And web APIs often use something called HTTP methods to get data that we need. This is the same kind of HTTP that comes before every website link. And it stands for huge titty tag protocol. In our case, we're gonna be using the methods get and put. Get will allow us to retrieve or read data like our video's view count. And put will allow us to update data such as our title. All right, let's try to get started with the coding. I'm gonna use Python because I think it's the easiest to understand. Starting with an example, let's try to get some data of a channel. So YouTube's documentation is pretty fucking ass. So like if anybody from Google is watching this, I could fix it for you guys. We can still grab some useful things from here like skeleton code for what we want to do. What we wanna do is first import the libraries that we need such as Google authentication and then set up the parameters for the API. Then create the API client, which is pretty much like connecting us to the API so we can use it. After that, we want to send a request to the YouTube API asking it for the channel data and then print out the response. And as you can see here from the documentation, this request will send a HTTP request to YouTube, pretty much asking it, can I get data about this channel? And it asks for some parameters such as the channel ID of the channel that I want to get the data of, as well as what they call parts. And to use our libraries, we're gonna have to install them using pip install, and then we can run it. So here we can see that it worked, and now we have all this data about this channel. And this data is kind of a mess right now, but we're gonna see how to deal with this data in a second. Now that we know how APIs work, let's try to apply it to what we wanna do. So here I have a video that I posted on my second account. So for this video, can I get all the girls to comment a red heart? Only girls. I'm serious this time, I'm not playing. If I see one boy, I'm deleting the app. I'm serious now, I'm just getting pissed off. To get the data of the video, we're gonna have to edit our request. Like before we were asking YouTube's API, can I get data about this channel? And now we wanna ask it, how many views does this video have? And we can find this on the documentation. So in our code, we have to change our request to ask for video information. And I want the snippet and statistics data of the video. I also have to specify which video I'm talking about. And we can do this by giving it the video ID. And when we run it, the data we get back might look kind of messy, but it's actually not. It's packaged in what is called a JSON format. In order to store the specific data that we want, like the title and the number of views, we can just trace where our data is stored. For the title, we can see that it's stored in title, which is stored in snippet, which is stored in items. So I'm going to put the title in a variable called title. And for the number of views, we can see that it's stored in view count, which is stored in statistics, which is stored in items. And I'm also gonna put this in a variable. So when we print this out, we see that it works successfully as it prints out the number of views on a video. Now let's move on to changing the title. 
First, we have to check if the title needs to be updated. In my case, I only want to change the title if the view count changed from when we last checked it. Because my title includes the view count, we can just check if the title includes the current view count. If the view count changed, then our title would not include this current view count. Once I know that I have to update the title, I'm going to make a new title and store it in a variable. We're going to have to make a new request and this time we're not asking the YouTube API anything. Instead, we're telling the YouTube API to change the data of a video to this new data, which includes our updated title that we're giving it. Because we want to update data, this would be a put request as we can see on the documentation. And yeah, when it runs, we can see that on YouTube.com, the title of the video is changed. Okay, so now we just have to make this run forever. To automate this, we want to make our program run every 10 minutes or so. So to do this, we can put everything that we had in a loop, which means that once it finishes running, it'll run again. After each time the title is updated, I'm going to make the program sleep for 10 minutes. And as you can see here, it runs at the intervals of the sleep time that I set. In this case, it's like 5 seconds, but you can just make it however long you want. But the problem with this is I depend on my computer being on and running this program for it to work. What if there was a way for me to run my program without it depending on my computer? And the answer to this is something called the cloud. The cloud refers to software and services that run on the internet instead of locally on your computer. And to do this, we're going to have to use a cloud service. The three main platforms are Amazon AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud. I'm going to choose Amazon because Bill Gates kind of do be simping though. Pretty much, they set up these massive server and storage plants, which we can connect to. I guess in this case, we can think of it like we're virtually borrowing their computer to use. And the way we can do this is connect to their virtual machine and then just run our program on there instead of my personal machine. Then I can turn my machine off and my program will still be running on the cloud. Yeah, so that's pretty much it, and I hope it made sense. I'll leave all my code in the description below if you guys want to make the same thing or something similar, and feel free to show me in the comments below. Anyways, like, comment, subscribe, and you know, don't forget... Entropy will get us all in the end.